So I'm going to start off with a math. This is kind of a mashup uh, between average income and, uh, and population density. And the fact of the matter is global brands, um, they know their future revenue and earnings growth. They're not coming from these blue regions, North America and Western Europe. Uh, but rather, there's this newfound emphasis on, on the purple and red regions. This is, these are the regions of the home of this, this new emerging middle class. And this new emerging middle class, is, we're talking about 2.4 billion people. Uh, and it's growing, right? I mean, since 2000, the aggregate wealth in India has tripled. Uh, in Indonesia, it's more than quadrupled. And you know, by 2020, we're going to see over a billion middle class consumers in India and China. So this is retail as, as we know it. I mean, this is a, a photo that we took in Carrefour um, back in, in 2012 when Carrefour announced that they're actually pulling out of Indonesia. Now, why would an organization uh, pull out of a country of 250 million consumers that's projected to be one of the largest economies in the world by 2020? Uh, it's two words. It's System D. Uh, System D is this phrase that has been kind of pirated from Francophone Africa and popularized by Robert Neuwirth. Um, and it, it, it basically talks to these entrepreneurial, resourceful merchants in this informal economy, you know, an economy that's not necessarily regulated, one that's not necessarily um, ha has much uh, um, registration or taxes at all. But it's massive. Right? There's 1.8 billion people uh, who are working in System D, almost half of the workers on the planet. Right? And, uh, and this is something that is, is again, going to be growing. And there's, it's challenging because these are people who are operating outside of the traditional regulations. Um, but it is, it is massive. It is, it is the largest retail channel in the world. It's, it's, there's over $10 trillion. Um, and, and so you know, people think that Walmart is PNG's largest customer. And the fact of the matter is that PNG's largest customer are these group of informal entrepreneurs. And there's some real challenges associated with going to market in these places, right? Not only do you have to figure out all of these, you know, how do you get into this fragmented distribution channels, but you know, there's, there's clear issues associated with copyright um, that a lot of global brands are, are very tentative about. The other major challenge associated with System D is like, how, how do you provide discounts to, to consumers? Like if, if you're selling your product in System D in India and you want to give 10 rupees off across the board, you know, do you think that rural merchant's actually going to take 10 rupees back from his till and give it to that consumer? Um, you know, ultimately, System D, the D could stand for the shortcomings. Right? There is a real lack of data. There's no way to discount. Um, so at Jana, one of the, what we believe is that the mobile phone has a real opportunity here to make a difference into this, this massive retail channel. Now, you know, as we heard earlier, there's, there's over 7 billion active mobile subscriptions on the planet today. More than 5 billion of them are coming from emerging markets. This is, this is the fastest growing technology adoption ever. Um, and so we started the company actually in East Africa. We were giving prepaid airtime to people uh, to give us some data about, about themselves and their shopping patterns. And this was so popular that we started thinking about you know, what other types of actions can we start incentivizing in these underserved, understudied markets. And so that's the opportunity we're going after. So you're buying a bar, a bar of soap in Bangalore. You know, we can give you 20 rupees of airtime. Uh, you fill out a survey in Shanghai, we'll give you one RMB worth of, worth of airtime. You, you even watch a video in, in Sao Paulo, and you can start earning airtime. And so you're starting to basically start engaging with brands uh, and providing data. And so while you, start, while you think about this technology as um, you know, something that drives promotions, in reality, it's, it's something that really is, is focused on data. And, it's, and we're relatively big now. We've integrated with 237 mobile operators, which means we can instantly compensate all 2.4 billion emerging middle class consumers. And what does that mean in practice? You, know, you go to a rural Uttar Pradesh right now in India, and you'll see billboards that say, get 10 rupees off of Clinic Plus shampoo. So the consumer goes to her System D merchant. She buys the shampoo. She types in the unique ID on the inside of the pack. And instantly, her phone receives 10 rupees worth of credit. Um, so we're, ha we're bypassing that traditional retail channel. Um, and while the real value is, is not the sales lift that we're driving, but rather the data. Right? We're finally being able to start quantifying the world's largest retail channel. We're starting to create a dialogue between these global brands and these next billion consumers. Um, and it's something that you know, can bypass that, that traditional retail channel. So the average consumer in emerging markets spends upwards of 10% of their day's wage on mobile airtime. You know, if we can redirect half of that $200 billion that's being spent on advertising right now in emerging markets, 
if we could redirect it away from the people who own the billboards and directly into the pockets of the very consumers that these global brands are trying to reach, we could give a billion people a 5% raise. And so you know, that is, from my perspective, the future of retail. You know, we have more insights, you know, more efficient marketing, and ultimately economic empowerment on an unprecedented scale. So I'm going to leave you with the question of you know, what do you guys think consumption in emerging markets is going to look like? Thank you.